upbringing or who you are just as a person? I, I, I'll tell you a funny story uh, just regarding that. I was in Edinburgh in 1991. I was a member of Christophan Roundtable. And um, the guys knew that I was going down to Africa. I'd got a job actually in um, Johannesburg, I think it was, a urology SHO. But um, I intended to take three or four months to drive from Nairobi down to Johannesburg at the time. In the end, I arrived late, so I couldn't take the job. But um, in the January of that year, I decided to go to Moscow, and it was switching over from the Soviet Union to Russia. So a lot of the soldiers and police had both uniforms on in the transition period. There was people disagreeing with the transfer, uh, I suppose, of the old communist bloc to a uh, more nationalistic Russia. And I had to be doctor on a trip. On a, we're driving a British Leyland truck, lovely old army truck, and um, we had about 20 people on that trip, and I was the doctor. And um, we were going from Kenya to t Tanzania to Zambia to Zimbabwe to Mozambique to Botswana and um, then to Zimbabwe, Zim, and um, then to South Africa. So it was a lovely trip, and it was um, going to take us many months, and uh, including some of my wanderers, which would sort of keep us going that bit longer. So anyway, I was in Moscow, and it was dire. It was at the Moscow of food queues in the shops and all the rest. So I joined one of the food coups and I met this girl, Olga. She happened to be a doctor. And um, I, I, I stayed in her house with some of her friends. Anyway and every way, I arrived in Mombasa two weeks late. So this truck, which was on a three-month journey, was held over waiting on me to come. Now, the people didn't really mind because they were all lying out on the beach, in Tibi Beach, and that whole... Indian Ocean side of Kenya is beautiful. I mean, it's just, there's nothing to compare it, maybe except for South Africa um, or the Indian Ocean, like the Maldives. It's absolutely beautiful. So the guys in the truck didn't really mind, but the, obviously the guys who were driving it in charge of it were really annoyed. And they were giving me a bollocking. And um, I had Chris from Melbourne, and um, David was from Wanganui in, in, in New Zealand. And while Chris was there, really making a big thing about it all, and I didn't really blame him, but it was worth it to me to live in the Soviet Union in that period. Um, David was out at the balcony of the hotel, and he says, oh, my God, look at this, this big string of Mercedes arrived. And he says, it must be the president. And the president then was Daniel Arap Mai. And I, I, I went to stand up. Look us here, and Chris said, "No, you, you sit down. You know, look us here. They'll probably pass on." So the next thing is they um, all arrived outside the hotel, and David said, "No, they're coming here." You know, and Chris was dying to look, but he was dying to <laughs> give me a bollocking as well. <laughs> you know. So anyway, when we were there, um, two guys came up to the room as security and stood at the door we were in. And Chris, you know, sort of gave him and says, what are you guys doing here? You know, please leave. And David came up and said, no, it'll be the president. Don't say anything. So anyway, um, this guy walked into the room. He says, is Dr. Patrick Tracy here? No way. Yeah. Would you believe it? So I didn't know what to say, you know, <laughs> because I just had arrived in Africa. I was getting a bollock and I didn't want a second bollock. And <laughs> so I sort of um, kept my head low. And Chris is looking at me saying, what have you done like this here, you know? And then this sort of Indian guy came into the room, wasn't very tall, maybe about five, six, five, seven, walked over, smiled at me and says, um, please be upstanding. And that was the code of the round tablers, you know, like this here, because you drank a toast to the queen and please be upstanding this year. And he was head of the whole East African section. That was like Malawi, no, not Malawi, um, Uganda, um, Tanzania, uh, Kenya, all the British sort of colonies on, on that east coast. 
And they, you know yourself, rule a lot of the economy there, you know. And he turned around, he stood beside me on my left-hand side, and um, he said to Chris, is Patrick in trouble? <laughs> so the guys from Chris Dorfman had contacted him, believe it or not, you know, and he was head of the round tablers there. And Chris is, Chris didn't know what to say. Sure, sure, because sure. You know, like here, you know. So he says, let me make a gesture, like this here. And Chris is looking at him, he says, we're going to make a donation to your cause, like this here. And Chris is all ears, listening, yes, seeing that he's down so much money, sitting there for two weeks. And he says, you know the way that there's um, no good beer outside um, of Kenya until you reach South Africa? He says, we're giving you 24 um, crates of Tusker beer to put it on the back, because we, we had a big truck with a big trailer like this here, and Chris thing. And then he takes out a wad of notes and gives him his, and that'll make up for the, the, the lost time as well. <laughs> I thought it was wonderful, you know. Yeah. Unbelievable.